Hi guys, my name is Sean. I'm a houseplant enthusiast from Jakarta, Indonesia. I like to nerd out to the science behind how we can keep our houseplants happy and to multiply them in our homes. So if you're into that kind of content, please do subscribe to my channel and send me likes. This video is going to be a three-part series. I'm going to cover three different uh, potting mix here that I've developed. And this is actually very, very important because each plant's uh, family has evolve very differently in their natural habitat and in order for them to be happy in our uh, homes we should give them the optimal conditions and one of them other than sunlight and watering would be the potting mix that you choose for it um, don't get me wrong any plants can literally live in any potting mix as long as you adjust the watering correctly there are minor adjustments that you can do so there's no uh, right or wrong However, if you give them the medium that absorbs and releases water and uh, gives, have that property where the roots really like, uh, they will thrive for you. So the three mediums are the aeroid uh, potting mix right here, uh, the general purpose potting mix, and finally here we have the jungle floor uh, potting mix. So do check out all three videos as I go through with you how to use them, uh, what kind of species would uh, thrive in them, and I will show you also uh, in my around my home uh, a tour of what my plants look like when they're potted in these mediums. I also explain, you know, the why, like why do they <laughs> like these mediums. So without further ado, let's get started. <laughs> Welcome to today's video. I'm going to talk about my general purpose potting mix and I'm actually doing a voiceover now because I lost audio for this particular clip. Sorry about that. And in case you missed my previous two videos, I discussed the aeroid and epiphyte potting mix as well as my forest floor potting mix. And these are going to be specific for those kinds of plants. The general purpose potting mix that I'm going to discuss today is going to be good for most plants. However, it really retains a lot more moisture than the other the potting mix that I've mentioned before and it's good for plants that love the sun, that loves to hang on to moisture a little bit longer like your ferns, your ficus and it's also good for people who don't want to water their plants very often, people who are neglectful. You can definitely pot up your plants in this potting mix and just wait until it's dry. Uh, however, if you are an overwaterer like me, I do recommend to pair this potting mix with terracotta pots because it's going to dry out a lot faster. I'm going to uh, show you some examples. Hang on. Alright, I'm back. Say you've got a terracotta pot with this combination of potting mix and also you have a plastic uh, pot here. Let's say the volume... Oh my God. I see the volume of the potting mix is the same in, in these two pots. Your terracotta is going to dry out way faster. In my experience, if I right now with water, plant in it, this will take about uh, three to four days to completely dry out. That means that air is actually going through the porousness of the pot uh, and then drying out the inside of the, of the, pot, uh, of the potting mix here. This will take about I don't know, 12 to 14 days to completely dry out. So this is going to dry out a lot, a lot slower than the terracotta pot. So whatever species of plant you have and also your watering regime, keep in mind if it's raining and it's outside, I do recommend terracotta pots. If you are a heavy waterer, definitely do with terracotta pots. Um, or if you have plants that really don't like a lot of moisture. For example, I do grow a lot of peperomias in this kind of setup and they do like it because it dries out fairly quickly. Uh, for this plastic pot situation, of course the ferns would love it because ferns have to retain moisture for a very long time and it cannot dry out. But a lot of uh, pothos and um, some vining philodendrons, they actually do like this setup. You know, you have a lot of, a lot of thirsty plants like your cordyline, uh, your coleus, they all also do better with plastic because they will retain water. Uh, herbs, actually some herbs would do better with this and some herbs would do better with this depending on how much moisture they need. So definitely do get play around with these, get to know your species. And yeah, just know that the pot with the combination of this potting mix makes a huge difference. It's, it's a matter of life and death. So just make sure that you're aware. Okay, uh, so this principle applies to the other potting mix as well, uh, just so you know. <laughs> so let me quickly go through with you the ingredients used and mainly there's cocoa peat in here. Uh, traditionally people use a peat moss, I think people in the States, Canada, Europe tend to use a little bit more peat moss and those are actually harvested from swamps. They contain really good bacteria and nutrients 
in them. However, it's not really sustainable in my opinion. So I prefer to use coconut, uh, cocoa peat. So it's made of coconut that's ground up to pow uh, this powder. It contains no nutrients, but it's got really good uh, properties in terms of absorbing and releasing the moisture. It's also very soft, as you can see here. And it doesn't compact that like uh, clay type uh, potting mix does. So I really like that. However, you do need to fertilize a little bit more. You need to provide it with nutrients, which is what we're going to talk about next. We also added worm casting in here. And the worm casting is going to provide nutrition and beneficial bacteria ecosystem into this potting mix. So it's going to help your plants grow beautiful and nice. And of course, I actually recommend to, for you to put um, additional per fertilizer, especially the slow release ones, because uh, that's going to give them a time release fertilizer and it's going to be very uh, species specific and uh, of course they have NPK value uh, depending on the type of species that you're growing in, in this potting mix so yeah do make sure that you add a little bit of that uh, f extra fertilizer in, in this potting mix however just keep in mind that it already contains some nutrients there's also burnt rice hulls in here and I use burnt rice hulls in all my ingredients they actually uh, are carbonized material uh, that uh, prevents or not prevents but it Meaning, antifungal and antibacterial rice hulls would absorb moisture quick, pretty quickly and release them very quickly as well. Uh, and lastly, we've got perlite in here, and perlite will also add aeration into the uh, roots. It will let the potting mix dry out faster, which the plant, every plant actually do appreciate the drying out period. So this is fairly uh, good. Um, well draining uh, potting mix. So let me take you on a tour around my house and show you the plants that are growing in this medium and see, see how they're doing so you can learn and try to apply it to your um, plants hopefully. So yeah, here is a huge Calathea mosaica. Uh, it's done really well but it's a pretty slow grower but uh, back then I had it in the general purpose potting mix so it can live in this uh, potting mix condition because it's not as finicky as the other Calatheas which I will show in my other videos. They do need that uh, jungle floor potting mix and that airiness around the roots to survive but the Calathea mosaica I'm sure it will appreciate the jungle floor potting mix better but this is fine too. The general purpose potting mix works. And here are some peperomias, uh, it's in the terracotta pot and this is actually my general purpose potting mix and I, I might have uh, uh, top dressed this with uh, some pine bark but believe me it's definitely the general purpose potting mix. This as well, this is a propagate and it's growing in a, a general purpose potting mix but with the terracotta combo because peperomias cannot sit in uh, wet soil for long. And this is the same situation where I see it's in a, my general purpose potting mix and it's growing like crazy. Uh, I had this indoors before uh, I put it outside and I would water this every five to seven days I would say. And you can, Papyromis, you always feel the leaves if it feels like oh, like it's full, like right now it's full, like uh, you can barely fold it, it, don't water it. But you only water it when it's slim and it's easily to, uh, easy to fold them. Here we have a maiden hair fern, it's getting pretty bushy. It died into a stump I think more than once because the wind keeps breaking it off and I keep uh, forgetting to water it. And this is in a general purpose potting mix. So it retains uh, moisture and it's not focusing really, really well. Yeah, so ferns do love um, this potting mix. And here are some uh, Pothos mandula. And I propagated this into a general purpose potting mix with a terracotta combo. Same here and it's looking beautiful. There's some sun burning here. Look at the new leaves. And they do love direct sunlight, by the way, uh, they, to push out the variegation. So yeah, this uh, actually this potting mix do dry out. Like again, it rained the day before, uh, this morning, and by the end of the day, in the evening, this will be bone dry. You can see that the potting mix would be uh, light brown in color because it's terracotta pot and uh, situation. And in this case, actually, the plant will dry out a little bit slower because this is in a plastic pot. However, there's many cuttings in here and they're very thirsty, so they will drink up that water. Uh, Syngonians actually do prefer aeroid potting mix, but I do have them in the general purpose potting mix. Here, I just propagated them right into the general purpose potting mix. And they're doing so well. This is all propagates. So plop right into the potting mix. Uh, you don't want to overwater these. I did lose some cuttings. They yellowed, yellowed up and fell off. 
So my, my advice actually for Syngoniums is to do them in the aeroid potting mix instead, but of course the general purpose potting mix does work. And here are some more Hoyas, uh, Hoya, I believe Carnosa, yeah, green form, and I have them in a general purpose potting mix and in a terracotta pot. They dry up really fast. I notice I have to water this every one to two days. And here's a fern that I rescued in my video previously, uh, and uh, it's in my general purpose potting mix. Look at that. Oh my god, this is so cute. Yeah, it looks very happy in here. It's gonna grow like crazy. I'm gonna show you more ferns in a bit, some bigger ones. Sorry for the sunny super glare <laughs> here, but this is my uh, basil and they love the general purpose potting mix because it retains moisture um, for a very long time. So they're doing really well. I keep taking cuttings and sticking them back into soil. So this is uh, the potting mix, right? Keep saying soil i don't know why i'm used to it so yeah and this is going to become that in no time there's a citrus plant here in my general purpose potting mix they do want to dry up between watering but they do want uh, when they're watered they do want to be well fed because they are very thirsty plants here is a rosemary and uh, well in a general purpose potting mix terracotta pot this is the hibiscus and again, it's also in my general purpose potting mix because it likes full sun and it likes water. So yeah, plants that like full sun generally likes water, which means that they do want to hold on to water a little bit longer. So I would give them my general purpose potting mix. This uh, uh, pineapple as well is growing in the general purpose potting mix, doing so, so well here. And yeah, you don't want to leave them to dry up because this is the full plant section again. And there's caladiums in here and also it's in a general purpose potting mix. But I think this is going to be dormant soon. Actually, this begonia was grown in a terracotta pot and in a general purpose potting mix. And it's a new growth happening. So yeah, um, actually this begonia would appreciate a jungle floor potting mix better. But this is fine too because this is in a terracotta pot. They do need to dry out completely between waterings. So if this was in a plastic pot, I would definitely have gone with a jungle floor potting mix because uh, this general part purpose potting mix would not be good with a plastic pot for begonias. It would just overwater them. But they are happy with this uh, terracotta pot. Here we are in the fern section. And actually a lot of these are grown in the uh, uh, general purpose potting mix because they do need to retain moisture a lot longer. As you can see... Gia! Cut it out! As you can see here, uh, this is direct sun, this is morning direct, so don't worry about this that plant. They cannot take full sun, but they do appreciate the direct sunlight. So yeah, I give them that closer. I give them that uh, general purpose potting mix here, where they, it can retain moisture. It, uh, ferns cannot be dried out at all. They will lose ferns, they will crisp up for you. And I have caladiums over there, and of course I'm not going to get close to it because I have to climb over the fence and it's yeah, it's not that kind of day. <laughs> and they're in a general purpose potting mix because caladiums, while they do want, like a bit of drying out period, they're also very thirsty plants and they need to hold on to that moisture, especially when you give them direct sunlight like this. Here is a beautiful jungle cactus. And actually for the most part, all my jungle cactus, uh, while they're apophytes, I do grow them in a general purpose potting mix, but I, uh, com com <laughs> I put them in a terracotta pot so they can dry out pretty fast in them. And I find that they are quite happy in them. But other than that, I also think that the aeroid potting mix would serve them quite well as well. And here's a Ficus elastica burgundy. And um, this is uh, three plants in one pot, which means that it has to be uh, watered pretty frequently because they're going to be very thirsty and it's putting out aerial roots. How cute. So this is in a general purpose potting mix. It, it is top dressed with burnt rice hulls because we, for aesthetic reasons. However, because of heavy watering, the perlite would rise to the top. So now we have perlite on the top as well. But yeah, I have to water this plant every day. It's very thirsty. Uh, but it is in a fast draining general purpose potting mix and there's going to be a lot of roots. If I take this out right now, I'm sure this is going to be a very root bound plant, but I'm not going to do that today because that's another video for another time. <laughs> and here are some fern propagates. I have them propagated directly into a uh, general purpose potting mix. I basically just uh, separated the parent plant and just stuck, you know, bits of cuttings, bit, bits of piece, not cuttings. I just divided them and put them in different pots. As you can see, this baby leaf is growing out. How cute. Some of them are growing faster than the others, uh, but they're all very much alive. Very nice. Look at this. 
Like this looks like a pot of nothing where I stuck the cutting, but look at this. This is actually alive. This is gonna give me a full pot of fern in I would say five to six months time. I love I love doing that these things like where you can um, see them grow and you can multiply them. It's such a satisfying feeling. But yeah, ferns go with the general purpose potting mix. You're gonna appreciate that. Here we have some uh, cordelines and they're all in a general purpose potting mix because they are thirsty plants, they like direct sunlight, some would even say full sun and same goes with crotons, um, you do give them a, a potting mix that holds on to moisture a little bit longer because they appreciate that. And I water these almost every day. And here are some coleus, they also like full sun. Uh, these are all top cuttings, I just stuck them right into the potting mix and it's been in here for about two weeks and they're doing well. Look at the baby leaves over there, how cute. Yeah, so you can also propagate plants directly into the general purpose potting mix. And more ferns here of course, and they are propagated also into the general purpose potting mix. I love looking at baby ferns. Hello, look at that. Hi, what's your name? Here's some uh, Peperomia argeria in terracotta pots and general purpose potting mix. They love it. It does dry out pretty fast. I water this every two to three days. Uh, yeah, I'm happy and this is another one also and oh my god, look at the growth, crazy. So this is the one that I did in my Peperomia Argeria video, again, it's in a uh, general purpose potting mix, terracotta pot, it's a small pot. Uh, Peperomias like to be in smaller pots which allows them to dry out a bit faster than if you put them in a big pot. So this is the Philodendron ne uh, Neat Lemon Lime and it's in a general purpose potting mix. I also like to do my skin dapsis and the pothos. This way I propagate them and just stick them into... Oh, hello, this is a... This is not good, this is a caterpillar, it's eating the leaves. <laughs> As you can see here, something's been eating them. So, yeah. Uh, this potting mix actually dries out really slowly compared to the air right. So I can actually leave this plant alone. I don't have to water this often. Uh, but keep in mind, uh, it's very prone to overwatering, especially if you have young cuttings in here that don't have a lot of roots, you're gonna overwater them very easily. So usually if I'm propagating these in this kind of uh, general purpose potting mix, I will keep them indoors until they're older and established like this plant is, and I'll leave it outside where it can get rained on every day and it won't get overwatered. It's gonna drink up that water. Here's the Sansevieria in uh, terracotta pot, fast draining, and general purpose potting mix. So yeah, they can be in this combination a bit squished here as well, but it's doing really well. I may have to upsize the pot soon. Uh, but yeah, they cannot be overwatered by the way. As, uh, when this was a young plant, I did lose a few leaves from overwatering. However, as you can see, this is such a mature plant. It can be rained on every day and it's out, living outdoors as well. So it's okay for it to get watered every day. Here's a fiddle leaf fig. I've had this in this pot for a long time, for a year and it's doing well in this general purpose potting mix and terracotta combo. It does need to dry out completely between watering. Fiddle leaf figs don't like to be overwatered. They're gonna give you yellow leaves that fall off. So um, I let the rain take care of this plant. If not, I water it every two days or so, depending on the weather. If it's like super crazy sunny, I would water it daily. And coleus, they love water. They love full sun, they love direct sunlight and they're very thirsty. I have to water this plant sometimes twice a day. It's in a general purpose potting mix and as you can see the perlite has risen to the top because I do water this violently. I'm always in a hurry but yeah they do not give this other types of potting mix because they will uh, dry out too quickly because this plant really needs to hold on to the moisture. Uh, here is a canna lily and it's uh, known to be very very thirsty, hungry, they need to be fertilized often, they need to be in full sun and of course I give it a general purpose potting mix because it, it, it does need to hold on to moisture for uh, a long time and it will drink up that moisture fairly quickly. But I do have this in a terracotta pot even though it will do well in a plastic pot as well because it can hold on to that uh, moisture. For this plant, I notice that I tend to uh, underwater it rather than overwater it. So this is the opposite uh, with my other plants where I tend to overwater. This is a little bit underwatered, even though I do water them almost every day. A spider plant here, I give it a general purpose potting mix and a plastic pot only because it lives outside. It will appreciate 
uh, terracotta pot better because it will dry out a bit faster but it's being happy and I, I'm too lazy to repot him and this is getting direct sunlight so they are a little bit thirstier than the, the spider plants that are indoors and as you can see they have many pups so this is a pretty thirsty fella so it's probably happy in a plastic pot instead yeah but you can give uh, some of your plants general purpose potting mix just uh, adjust water accordingly if this was a young spider plant I would put it in either in terracotta or I put it in a smaller pot and I would not water it so frequently because they, uh, spider plants cannot be overwatered. They will drop leaves. Here's a peace lily and I give them the general purpose potting mix in a plastic pot because they can uh, live with moisture for a little bit uh, longer than other plants. I believe they grow near swamps in, in real life. So yeah, just know your species. Just know what species will do well in which uh, potting mix and since this plant is indoors in that potting mix I do water it every uh, 10 to 14 days depending on the sun and I love it I love it when I don't have to water the plant so frequently it's a peperomia incana from my propagation video and it's doing well and it's general purpose potting mix and plastic pot but keep in mind with this combination uh, I do water this every I don't know every 10 to 14 days or so because it doesn't need watering much at all. The, the pot actually holds on to a lot of moisture. So if you're the kind of plant parent that wants to water your plants very irregularly and also the plant can withstand drought and do appreciate drying out period, do use the general purpose potting mix with the plastic pot so they, you don't have to water it every few days. Here we have a lot of uh, jungle cacti that is propagating away in uh, general purpose potting mix. Uh, I find that it's just convenient to propagate them this way rather than in other potting mix. They do seem to love it um, because it's in a plastic pot I have to be more mindful not to keep it soggy wet inside because it's very easy for water to retain in there. Uh, conversely when you have them in this terracotta pot they can dry out pretty fast. As you can see this is already starting to dry out a bit. The texture, um, the color is really lighter in color. So by the evening time this would have dried out. Yeah but the plastic pot again would not dry out so fast. It's not as forgiving. This huge ficus elastica is grown in a general purpose potting mix. Uh, it's an old plant and it's uh, growing like crazy. It gets direct sunlight and it's very thirsty. So I water it every day uh, and they do need that extra moisture uh, in the roots because they, there's three plants actually living in here. Also coupled by the fact that this is a huge, an old plant and in a terracotta pot. So I do have to water this every one to two days depending on the sun. So I'm gonna do a rapid fire tour to show you all my peperomias that are propagated directly into general purpose potting mix and terracotta pot. They seem to love it and this one's growing to a new point. So this is that, that, and this is a new peperomia that I just put in. Um, yeah, general purpose, general purpose, and you just water it very irregularly. Uh, here's some, uh, Hoya Bella and Hoya Bellas are thirsty plants. They like to stay in uh, water. I think they might be pests <laughs> or uh, hard water stains. I'm not sure, but they do like to stay a bit moist. So I keep them in a plastic pot and general purpose because they cannot be left to dry out. Here's an Aglonema. By the way, Aglonemas do like a general purpose potting mix. Or they also do like the jungle floor potting mix. However, my, my trick is that for terracotta pots, do give them general purpose because it will dry out too fast and for plastic pots use the jungle floor. Here is a uh, ZZ Raven that propagated also directly into the general purpose. Here is a jungle cacti that is propagated into the general purpose potting mix and it's already putting out growth. How nice. Jungle cactus do like a lot of different uh, potting medium. They can survive in different uh, conditions provided that you don't overwater them. Uh, let me see what else. And here I think Finally, I'm just gonna end the tour right here. This is the Peperomia raindrop polybotria and there's four cuttings in here and they do so well in this uh, general purpose potting mix. I don't really water this much. Uh, I would say every, mm, I don't know, five to seven days, but there's because there's so many cuttings in here, that's why they, they are a little bit thirstier. If you only had one plant in here, I may have to water it only every 10 to 14 days. Uh, so yeah, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that it's in, uh, helpful and understanding, you know, potting mix 
and your watering schedule because that's really really important depending on your species and the, the potting mix that you give it. I hope that you can pick up one of these. Maybe if you're in the Indonesia region or if you want to mix your own, uh, good luck. And I hope that your plants are happy and thriving, that you're all safe. I will see you in the next video. Thank you. Bye.